the Office of Environment and Heritage, the, the sort of the key things, the key question that I ask myself each day when I turn up to work is, as we think about the programs that we deliver and where government invests, we continue to ask ourselves the most important question, which is, what is it that only government can do? You know, what's the space where we should work? It shouldn't be a question of, you know, what can we do, but where is the space where only government can act? And I think that takes us to the questions around markets and how markets are structured and where markets fail, and therefore where does where should government um, where should government act? Um, and there's two components to that. Probably there's the market structure, and then there's an assistance in transition. And I'll start from where we're at a little bit. And there are a lot of programs that government does run to assist in that transition uh, within the economy, whether it's the Sustainability Advantage Program, which we run, which is basically a, a network recognition collaboration framework, which allows businesses to work together in clusters to look at benchmarking and improving performance. Whether it's an energy savings scheme, which is really a technical uh, skill set about improving energy efficiency in business, uh, environmental upgrade agreements, financial facilities, uh, energy savings schemes, which is the uh, certificate trading scheme, uh, the Neighbours, the National Built Rating Scheme, um, or our programs around uh, renewable energy precincts, renewable energy programs and encouraging renewable energy, whether that's at the large scale or at community levels. Yet there's a lot of different programs that are running and, and one of the big questions now is, what's the cohesive whole of that and how does that, how does that work? And I think government is really on the cusp of addressing that question um, and I think you'll see more coming in that area uh, very, very soon. Um, so let's go back to that question then about what is it that only we can do and I think if we look at market structures and, a, and that transition is a, is a key place for us to work. Information asymmetry is a key issue there in terms of, in terms of markets the, the, and this comes to that question of the small businesses compared to large. I think large businesses, large corporations have better access to information have a greater capacity to evaluate the information that comes to them, while small businesses are really looking for a credible voice, want some security around it. Are they, are they buying something which will work? Almost a consumer, almost similar to a consumer position uh, in terms of wanting to know, is this a good investment? How's that going to work? Well, how's that going to pay back for me? Should I be taking that loan from Westpac? Uh, what will be my payback period? You know, what is that capital investment wise? That sort of, those sorts of questions. And we're doing some audits and we're publishing the results of those so that people have a framework in which to make better decisions. So dealing with information, a, a key component. Structural issues uh, and the commercial property sector is a really good example here. Uh, looking at that sort of tenants are often exposed to much higher costs because of perhaps the inefficiency of the way the commercial property that they're a tenant of operates. So programs like Neighbours which allow uh, businesses to compare the efficiency rating and the, and the environmental performance of one tenancy over another becomes a really important tool. It's credible, it's available, and people can sort of start to make some of those decisions, which will reduce their costs, improve their productivity, improve their competitiveness. Um, and then, of course, there's the, the whole problem of the efficiency of the cost signals and price signals. I mean, we have seen power prices in particular uh, skyrocket uh, over a period of time. Uh, I, I keep forgetting the numbers on this one. Uh, they haven't cemented into my brain yet, but it's many percentage points increase uh, over a four year period. I think it's well over 100% increase over four years. Um, but there, there's a long gap between the consumption of the energy and the bearing of the cost. And, and I know it seems logical, but a lot of small businesses in particular don't create the association between the behaviour and the costs that represents to their business. Uh, some large businesses don't do that either. And I think we, you know, part of our role is to provide some advice, some information around that and, and where, where they can take action in meaningful ways. So for us, you know, what is it that only government can do? We also need to plug very strongly into what the social attitudes are. And just recently we uh, released the report on who cares about the environment. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's quite, there's a couple of quite interesting numbers in there. Uh, since we had that, we've had a pretty good conversation about climate change. In uh, 2009, 23% of respondents identified climate change as, as, you know, the most pressing environmental issue. 
in 2012 it was down to 12 percent mm -hmm. um, and when we look at uh, the issues that are confronting people now um, 11 percent uh, see the cost of living as a key issue uh, compared to the biodiversity aspects uh, at six percent uh, but if you were to go out 10 years cost of living still stays at 12 percent uh, compared to the natural environment of 14%. I think cost of living, as expressed in changes to energy prices, is a really complex story to talk to the community about because the biggest advantage environmentally out of this is around resource efficiency and defraying the costs of you know, very expensive new infrastructure all the resources required for it, all the resources required for the transmission of the energy to deal with peak loads and that sort of stuff. So there's a really interesting dimension between those things that are most pressing in the community's minds and the environmental benefits. Excellent.